This video is for you if you're curious, ah, what's that trainer carry doing with that Icelandic Mary Limra, uh, with this concept of a gated bridalist start? Maybe you're curious, what is a bridalist start? What does it entail? Uh, maybe you know what a bridalist start is, but you're into gated horsemanship and you're curious how this all pans out with a gated horse. I've created this presentation because I want to share with you all the thoughts that have been bouncing around in my head for several years now and where I've landed so far about this endeavor, about this process, some of the rules that I've set for myself, and just share with you how I've structured things. So if you're curious about this project in any way, shape, or form, this is a great video to start with. So you have some insight into the meanderings of my mind and what has led me to this moment. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So I thought I'd begin by just talking a little bit about myself and my background. And I am first and foremost a certified Icelandic horse trainer. I'm certified by a university in Iceland called Hólar University. I'm fluent in Icelandic and spent three years there getting a Bachelor of Science in Horsemanship and Ridden Instruction. And I think this is important because I'm a believer that when it comes to horsemanship, discipline is extremely important. Craig Johnson once said, when it comes to discipline and horsemanship, it's important to pick one and get some. And I've always appreciated that because I believe that if you want to truly develop your horsemanship, you need to have a disciplined approach. And if you have a disciplined approach, that usually is best structured within a specific discipline. And I'm really lucky because Icelandic horsemanship as a discipline is a very academic and lively and ever developing sport. I'm surrounded by a community of people that is open-minded, always challenging each other, loves to study every detail about our horses and our competitions and our horses' welfare. And so that's been really an incredible background for me as a horse person is being a part of that community and becoming certified within that community and then pursuing a professional career within that community. Um, I'm also just a general clinician and educator. Um, along with my friend Laura Benson, we started the initiative Resident Riding, and we've done clinics at large expos such as Equine Affair and the Minnesota Horse Expo. And alongside that, I am a performer in the Knights of Iceland performance team. In that performance team, I partner once again with Laura and also Guðmar Thor Peterson. We'll talk more about both of them here soon. Uh, but in these shows, we do all sorts of cool and crazy things. We ride through a lane of fire at high speed in the Icelandic course's unique gate, the Flying Pace. And we also do a fast-paced drill team. Notice there's a lot of fast. We're really into speed and we do fun stuff like a beer told, and then also some really impressive stunts where we've trained horses to have sparklers on their legs, and we do an act with live vocals and torches. So there's a lot of neat stuff there. And it's been, for me, really an important part of my development as a horse person, not only because the shows are challenging and engaging and fun, but it's a great way to connect within my Icelandic course community and then also connect to a larger group of horsemen and women that are the top of their fields, that are our fellow performers. And then in recent years, partly because I became introduced to the concept of liberty through doing these Knights of Iceland performances alongside liberty performers, I've become more and more a liberty enthusiast. So I've started integrating a lot of liberty training into the training of the horses in our training barn, particularly using it as a tool to help heal horses that maybe have some difficult behavioral issues that they're working to overcome. 
So liberty has been a very fun thing for me to dive into, something new. I'm forever a student of learning something new, and liberty is just a great way to, for me to just keep pushing myself. Uh, so we'll talk more about that in a little bit. One question you may be asking is why a bridalist start? Or more fundamentally, what is a bridalist start? And a bridalist start is any time you take a horse that is untrained, unstarted, and you train them to be a good riding horse without the use of a bridle. Or in some cases, some trainers do it without the use of any headgear whatsoever. So no halters or anything like that are involved in the training of the horse. Since starting Liberty and Bridalist work and really starting to integrate them more into my horsemanship and general training, I've noticed that these disciplines have an enormous mental and physical benefit to the horses that have the opportunity to be trained in them. I've seen Liberty heal horses that have really struggled in their interactions and relationships with human beings. And that, of course, makes me ask, well, what if we started with that type of training? What if that was our foundation with our young horses, as opposed to maybe starting with more traditional forms of training and then using the Liberty and the Bridalist work to help out when there's a need? What if we actually began with those concepts? I've also always just been a fan of trying to, in horsemanship, think outside the box. I think this process of trying to do a bridalist start will necessitate innovation and creativity on my part. And I think that's really important because as horse people, we should always, always be challenging the status quo. Uh, traditions are important. It's important to learn and perfect methods that are tried and true, but it's also important to question those methods and try new things that aren't tried and true and see where that takes you. And then finally, bridalist starts have become more and more common in the big horse world, I call it, or, or just the horse world in general. There have been several trainers that have done bridalist starts and one big uh, competitions from uh, Mustang makeovers to placing high in the rankings in freestyle competitions around the United States. And I, to my knowledge, have never encountered or heard about someone doing this with a gated horse or an Icelandic horse. Doesn't mean that it hasn't been done, but I don't know of someone that has done it or really recorded it and shared that knowledge with others. And so the question was, why not me? Why don't I just try it and share that experience with my community? And I think the challenging part about the concept of the bridalist start with a gated horse, and especially with an Icelandic gated horse, is with Icelandic horses, we have five gates, the walk, trot, canter, but then we also have the tolt and the pace. And a large part of the training that we do is centered around trying to program each of those gates and have them be balanced in each of those gates. And this is really challenging. And the idea of doing that without a bridle and without ever having put a bridle on a horse is just kind of miraculous to me. I don't even know if it's possible. We know that riders have been able to take Icelandic horses and ride all five gates brideless. Um, we've seen that done in our community. And so we know that piece is possible, but those horses were always trained with a bridle first. So in this bridalist start that I'm going to do, that is going to be long term. One of the main things that I'm going to be exploring is can we program those different gates and have them all be on cue and balanced without ever having put headgear on the horse. So far in this lecture, you've probably heard me say the word community like 20 times. And I do not believe in standalone horsemanship geniuses. 
I am a believer that horsemanship is always developed as a community and we build off of each other's experience and knowledge and we will never achieve the same success alone that we can achieve in coordination with others. These are four people that have been my inspirations within the Icelandic horse community. And we'll start with Terrell Hill. So Terrell is my significant other, my beloved significant other, and he will be helping me throughout this entire process. And he is also an inspiration because he was one of the first people that I met that rode bridalists a lot. He's pictured on the top left corner with his gelding Irish. And one of the first times that we met and I went to his and his mom's little farm, he did a bridalist demonstration for me where he cantered around in circles around me bridalists. And that was love at first bridalist ride, I guess. Um, <laughs> not quite, but uh, he has served as a guide for me throughout my horsemanship journey. We've been together for over 10 years now and work together throughout our entire relationship. And so we always challenge each other. We always push each other to be the best we can be. And I don't think that we could have accomplished even a fraction of the things that we've been able to accomplish in our horsemanship and with our horses if we didn't have each other. Next up is Kaylee Cavanaugh, and Kaylee is a fellow colleague of mine and also a graduate of Holar University. Kaylee was the first person to really introduce me to Liberty Training with Icelandics. Kaylee was the first one to really show me about trick training and how you create certain behaviors such as the Spanish walk in the rear. And she has always served as an inspiration because she's one of the most thoughtful and creative Liberty trainers that I know. She often goes it on her own and figures things out and has just a great way of thinking and putting the horse first in everything that she does. Gwimmer Thor Peterson is my first mentor and probably the reason I'm an Icelandic horse trainer today. Guimar is interesting when it comes to this bridalist start endeavor because as a certified Icelandic horse trainer, he moved to Kentucky in the United States and started training Icelandic horses. But as a part of that, he for years would attend expos and he started the Knights of Iceland performance team. And through those experiences, he became exposed to all sorts of alternative training methods and began to integrate those ideas and those concepts into his training and explore applying those to Icelandic horsemanship specifically. And I think this is a neat example of how Iceland as a community has always had a very open mind and taken advantage of those experiences and opportunities like Wimmer had being an Icelandic horse trainer operating out of Kentucky in that he was able to take his existing skill and knowledge and then take new ideas from the horse community that he was a part of here in the United States and integrate them and use them to better his Icelandic horsemanship. So he's always been an inspiration on that front for me. Last but definitely not least, my friend and colleague Lala Benson has been a hero of mine for years. She and I partner on many different things, but she has always been someone I've looked up to when it comes to bridalist riding, particularly training gated horses in bridalist riding and training the tolt bridalists. She's one of the first people that I saw really perform impressive and good quality told bridalists and the photo in the bottom right corner is a great presentation of that. Lala also is one of the first people that I saw really trained dressage exercises and more advanced dressage exercises bridalists. So in that way she has always served as both an inspiration and then also as a mentor when it comes to always being open-minded being creative and willing to explore these new and challenging things. 
she's always that kind of positive voice in my mind that says, hey, we can do this. We can try something new and it's going to be awesome. So these are my Icelandic horse community of trainers and people that have helped and inspired me and also will continue, I'm sure, in this process to be a part of what we're going to work on with this bridalist art. I first met Dan James when I was pacing out of the arena at high speed during a Knights of Iceland performance with the reins in my teeth and almost crashed into poor Dan and his Liberty team. Uh, he wasn't at all disgruntled. He took it like a pro uh, because he is a pro. And I was super impressed with that. Shortly thereafter, I obtained his business card and began taking lessons with him. Dan's method of training Liberty and introducing Liberty is, in my opinion, probably the best in the world. It's rooted in techniques that were first developed by Heath Harris, and Heath Harris trained horses for film, for movies. And then Dan Steers and Dan James, as a part of Double Dan Horsemanship, has further developed the methodology and made it more accessible for a large number of people. A lot of the best and most successful Liberty trainers today uh, use methods that are rooted in Dan's and Heath Harris's methods when it comes to training Liberty. I think one of the reasons that his method is so successful and so effective is because it's very simple for the horse, very clear for the horse. And so horses pick it up really quickly. Humans, on the other hand, yeah, it's, it's a little trickier for us to learn. Um, but I tend to be a huge fan of methods that put humans to the test, but are very straightforward for, for the horses. Um, you can follow Dan James on social media, and he also has a lot of teaching videos available. I strongly encourage you to check them out or some of his performances out. And I think it's important to note that his methodology was rooted in training horses for movies, and that's one of two primary sources of liberty training knowledge. Movies and then circus is the other format in which liberty training has been used and um, developed for years. So a lot of the methods that I'm going to use to help train Limra in the beginning in her Liberty Start are going to be directly from Dan. So want to give credit where credit is due. This guy really has been key to my development as a Liberty Trainer. Soon after I started lessons with Dan, I realized that his skill went so far above and beyond what I really needed to be focusing on as a beginning Liberty trainer that it was just as good for me to take lessons from some of his staff members. And that's when I started taking lessons with Patrick and Avery. Patrick and Avery went on later to start the Gamala Unbridled Rescue Program. Um, Patrick began by riding brideless from California to Kentucky, and Avery accompanied him on some of that journey. And then the two of them went on to take on some of the nation's most difficult rescue horses and start them or restart them entirely at liberty. Just a really inspiring and incredible endeavor and these two people are just really kind-hearted and incredible trainers. Uh, another piece of this puzzle that I want to give a nod to is that I am becoming more and more uh, in realization that positive reinforcement is going to be important throughout this process as I attempt this bridalist start. And two trainers that have helped me learn more about that piece of the puzzle are Mustang Maddie. I've uh, been engaged in her online academy for several years now, doing one of her online courses. And then also Luke Gingrich, who I spent some time with in 2022, and whose integration of our positive work with more traditional bridalist writing and our negative work is just truly inspirational and groundbreaking. So I encourage you to check out both of those trainers as well. These are all people that, as I said in the beginning, are key to me getting the most out of 
my experience with my horses. They're sources of inspiration and knowledge, and we're only as good as the people we surround ourselves with. This is something that I want to be extremely clear on as I embark on this journey. This endeavor is not meant to be a criticism of the use of halters or bridles. It is not meant as a criticism of more traditional means and manners of starting horses under saddle. This is one of my pet peeves in the horse industry and with horse people in general. Oftentimes, as we discover something new, or we feel we discover a better way for the horse, or we start to become more attached to a particular type or style or um, ethical framework even around how we're training, we become very judgy and start to proclaim a better than status and focus a lot of our energy on criticizing others. And I believe that this is one of the biggest ego traps that we can fall into as horse people. I'm a huge believer in that what works for that horse and that person in that moment is an ever-changing, ever-developing thing, and it's going to be unique for that horse, for that moment, for that person. Therefore, any time that we start to believe that we're enlightened, we're usually not. Because the instant that we start to think we have all the answers, we're probably just getting wrapped up in our own egos. And anytime we're wrapped up in our own egos, we're never fully in consideration of our partners, the horse. So anyway, as I embark on this journey, I just want to be clear on this and share that clarity with you. That my hope is to learn from this. My hope is to be able to gather knowledge and new insight and apply that to more normal and standardized training. Um, but this is not meant to uh, demean or criticize those more traditional methods. When it comes to what I'm going to use to guide me as just general rules and practices in this process, I have kind of two categories. One is equipment and one is the process or the time frame. When it comes to equipment, I'm making a commitment to not use any headgear during the training sessions. So that includes halters, rope halters, bitless bridles, um, any traditional bridle or bit, basically anything that goes on the horse's head to help aid in the control or communication with the horse, I'm not going to use. Um, of course, this horse has to exist in a world where we do use that sort of headgear uh, in day-to-day -day handling. And so a halter will be used for daily turnout, uh, routine veterinary care, for bringing her to and from the round pen for my sessions. So this mare is halter trained uh, in a very basic fundamental way. But for the training, the process of taking her from an unstarted horse and making her into a trained riding horse, we're not going to be using any headgear. Uh, we will be using items such as a neck rope and, of course, some whips, Liberty whips and dressage whips. And we will also be using uh, equipment that aids in positive reinforcement training, such as targets and potentially clicker and other items of that nature. When it comes to the process and time frame, I've really struggled to envision or really outline much on that front because ah, I don't really know what we're going to be doing. So I've decided that my main guideline is whatever feels right. So one question, for example, right now at the beginning is, should I just do a year of groundwork and not ride her for a while and just really perfect the communication on the ground and her strength and balance on the ground? And then maybe in a year's time, start to ride her once I really, really have all that uh, 
finished in a way. Or should I introduce the rider and kind of simultaneously train some of the bridalist work with some of the liberty work from the ground? And I don't know yet, so that's yet to be found out. Uh, I also want to just really give myself space to uh, explore. So week to week, if something intrigues me or if I want to maybe spend that month doing exclusive positive reinforcement or maybe spend that month really focusing on the details of a particular trick at Liberty, that I have the creative license to explore in whichever direction I please. Um, and I think the final kind of guiding principle on this is, in my opinion, good trainers measure training in years, not months. So I do plan on really having a very long-term mindset as I do this. Whenever you set out to do something, I believe it's important to have clear goals. So one of my goals throughout this process is to achieve a high level of liberty training. I want both a high level of liberty training on the ground in that the horse is able to perform all sorts of exercises and tricks. And then I would also like to achieve a high level of bridalist riding um, that includes training all the gates of the Icelandic horse, and of course, this may or may not include pace, depending upon the uh, genetics and capacity of the horse that I'm using, and would include training more advanced dressage maneuvers, such as all the primary dressage exercises. I would like to long-term present at Liberty competitions. So the International Liberty Horse Association offers a variety of different Liberty competitive opportunities. And so I hope to partake in those regularly with this horse. And I also hope to present at Icelandic horse events as well. And this is a little tricky because there are some rules that may prevent me from actually participating or showing without being disqualified. Uh, bridalists, but I want to attempt it. And this could include just our traditional competitions on the oval track. I'm riding in one in the picture on this slide. Uh, but it could also include breeding evaluation assessments or all sorts of other potential opportunities of that nature that are more traditional ways to present your Icelandic horse. However, in this case, I would be doing it uh, without a bridle. So I've mentioned her name several times, but of course I need a partner in all of this, and Limra from Legacy is going to be my partner throughout this. Limra is an Icelandic mare. She's owned by a client and dear friend of mine, Jane Thomas. She's very well bred, very carefully and selectively bred. She's under a first prize stallion named Strokur and a mare that is under a honor prize stallion and first prize mare. She is likely five gated. As I mentioned earlier, that is yet to be determined as she starts her training, but she does likely have all five of the five gates of the Icelandic horse, walk, trot, tolt, canter, and pace. Uh, and it's kind of neat because I'm familiar with a lot of Limra's family members in that I have ridden both of her parents and trained both of her parents at various different points in time. And I've also had the pleasure of starting two of her siblings under saddle in more traditional methods. So I think that's going to be a neat perspective to have where I'm familiar with her family members and how they've progressed in their careers under saddle, uh, even though that was in more traditional formats. And I can compare that to the process that Limra goes through. I'm truly excited and honored to have such an exciting young mare that is well-bred uh, to use in this project. So a lot of gratitude to, to Jane for allowing me that. Finally, in respect to Limra, I want to make a promise. If at any point 
in this process, in this bridalist start, this becomes no longer in her best interest or negatively impacts her physical or mental welfare, this project will be discontinued. And furthermore, if I think that going through this is going to negatively impact her future as a riding horse and as a horse in the world today, I will also discontinue the process. I think this is important to just state once again, like so many other things in this presentation as we start on this journey, and something that I hope I'll revisit and reconsider regularly as we progress. And on that same note, I also have a promise to you. These are a couple of things. I've decided that I'm gonna document all of our sessions. And this is gonna be a little tricky because it means that there are gonna always have to be two people on duty whenever I'm working with Limra. But I think this is key because if we're gonna use this as a learning opportunity, if we're gonna learn from our mistakes, if we're going to be creative and try new things and see if they work, it's going to be very valuable to have a record of all that and be able to reference that record. I also agree to represent our process honestly, do my very best to be vulnerable and let you all know when things aren't going well uh, and be transparent about any mistakes that I make. We all have to make mistakes in order to grow. We all have to do stupid things sometimes and learn from them and turn around and try to do better next. And I have a feeling I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes and I'm hoping that I can just recognize them and embrace them as just a way to further improve my horsemanship and really achieve ultimate success in this process. Um, success is never smooth. It's never linear, especially when it comes to horses. It's always a zigzagging line of oftentimes chaos but that's part of what makes it challenging and what makes it fun. And then of course, I'll try to share our victories and attempt to share what I've learned that can also not only apply to someone that wants to try a bridalist start, but also to anyone's horsemanship. What of this can we take and use in a more generalized way? So as a part of that promise, I'm going to be offering quite a bit of free content. My goal is to post weekly a video summary of a part of our training progression, starting at the beginning and developing sequentially. It's going to be edited video footage because otherwise it would be too long, it would be too much video footage. And I'm going to narrate the footage and tell you kind of like a training journal what's been going on. Uh, I'll summarize kind of the most important moments and the content may vary week to week depending upon what we're working on and where we're at in the training progression or what moments I really want to share with you. I'll also be offering a monthly video interview and this is something I'm really excited about. If you can't tell from the rest of this presentation, I'm a big believer in community and I want to have discussions with the people that have played a role in making this possible. And also discussions with fellow trainers that are continuing to support me in this endeavor. So we plan on talking to Limra's breeder, to my colleagues, and to other sources of inspiration in the horse world and the world in general that are helping me navigate this whole thing. So if you stuck with me to the end of this presentation, I'm gonna bet that you're a very dedicated horse enthusiast. And most people that have been dedicated horse enthusiasts for a while uh, know that horses are expensive. And so of course I wanted to offer a way that you could support this endeavor with some dollars. Uh, so I will be offering some membership content uh, this content will include a selection of narrated full-length training sessions that I'll update monthly. Once again, it won't be every single session, but at regular intervals, I'll take one of the sessions that's been filmed and voice over 
or talk through as I do it the entire session and then upload that to the membership so that you can see a more detailed and comprehensive um, video of what's going on in the training. And I will also be keeping a written training journal documenting all the sessions and I will have that available on the membership uh, site as well. This will just be my musings around each session and I think it's just important to put things into writing. They encouraged us to do this at my university and we kept these training journals and I wanted to continue that same practice in this instance and share it with you. I'm also going to be offering quarterly Zoom Q&As for the membership. And what I want to do here is just open up the floor. If you have questions, if you saw something in a video and you were like, ah, I really like that. I want to know more. Or maybe you were like, eh, I don't know what I felt about that. I want to discuss it with Carrie. These quarterly Zoom meetings will be an opportunity for us to just hash out all of those ideas and concepts and moments and just have a very open discussion about them. And then, of course, uh, I wanted to give a little bit extra to you all that support us. And for each member, you will receive a discount code that will give you 10% off in my Dr. Tack boutique that offers all sorts of tried and true essential tack items uh, for horses and uh, apparel for riders as well as things that we use around the Tactor Barn and special offers on saddles. That's it, folks. Feel welcome to visit us on our website at Tactor.horse or check us out on social media. We are on Instagram and Facebook, although we're not always sure we're happy about that. Uh, feel welcome to also email us directly with any questions or concerns. And as always, take care. Be creative and have fun with your horses.